essentially this is the cold virus, one of the cold viruses that just happens to be lethal. Dr. Yvonne Maldonado is a professor of pediatrics infectious diseases at Stanford University. She's puzzled by the difference in the way COVID-19 has spared nearby San Francisco and devastated New York City. We're scratching our heads. No one knows for sure, right? It's also a mystery for Dr. Thomas Giordano, the chief of infectious diseases at the Baylor College of Medicine in Houston. As of May 17th, there were a total of 20,720 people confirmed and believed dead from COVID-19 in New York City. That's according to the city health department. San Francisco has had 36. How do you explain the shocking disparity? The doctors can only theorize. I just think that it's easier maybe to distance here than it is in New York. If it gets into the population in New York, uh, it can mag has more of an opportunity to magnify because the because the, just a sheer numbers are, are larger there. New York City has about 8.4 million people and its density is 27,711 people per square mile compared to San Francisco's population of 896,000 and 19,103 people per square mile. So sure, New York City is far larger, far more populated and much denser than San Francisco. Stand clear of the closing doors, please. And New York City is far more dependent on mass transit than San Francisco is on Bay Area rapid transit. But that doesn't explain the almost incomprehensible difference in COVID-19 deaths. Did New York City do something wrong? I don't think so. We think that there was early introduction here. But New York's introduction to COVID-19 apparently came early too, but from Europe. Everybody's looking at China and the virus is coming from Europe. Why? Because by the time we moved, the virus had traveled from China to Europe. And then people are getting on flights from Europe coming to New York. Two million travelers, two million travelers came from Europe. I mean, density is not the only answer. There's just also, it's the nature of the density. Dr. Maldonado also points out that San Francisco has a big tech industry, mostly people who can work from home. And with much less disease in the Bay Area, that means medical workers aren't so heavily exposed to the virus. I think we just follow the rules out here. I think people are very careful about following rules. Epidemiologists have suggested the fact that New York implemented social distancing five days later than San Francisco may be a big factor, as well as COVID-19's entry into lower income areas in New York. Once it gets in and it starts magnifying exponentially, a small difference at the beginning can translate to a huge difference days and weeks and months later. If it hits a different population in one city than the other, and then it, it, in one population is less able to social distance, that could explain part of it. So will we ever know why New York was hit so hard and San Francisco spared? You have to do genetic analyses of the different isolated strains. I think we need to learn more about what this virus can do because we're going to see it again. No one wants to be New York City as we move forward.